reach for the speed, I reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. So far to travel, so much to learn to know. Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to. Who knows how far you'll go? To a shining time station where dreams can come true. Your own imagination waiting there for you. Welcome to the 5,000 subscriber celebration. I know it's late. Oh well, I've been busy. I've just got back off my honeymoon. I've been married. I've had a lot going on, so this has been sort of bottom of the list. So I apologise now. But yes, this is now to, sub to celebrate my 5,000 subscribers. 5,000, probably at actual time of recording. 5.22 thousand subscribers. So thank you as well to those extra... 220 plus people that have subscribed. Anyway, over the years I've been asked many, many times what year does this take place in? Or when does Sodor Chronicles take place? And I've always either been very vague or never given an answer to this question as I never really thought about it. I didn't want to cement my series at any particular point in time, and with recent events, I never wanted my series to reflect any of those events. So no, there will never be COVID or modern wars in Sodor Chronicles. With that, shall we start? We go back in time to the 1800s, 1825 to be exact, with the formation of the Stockton and Darlington Railway and a very young Topham Hatt. The young Topham Hatt I saw the steam engines going up and down the small line, including the famous Stephen the Rocket. It was these trips up and down the line that got Topham enthralled with railways. He became determined to run his own. The young Hat joined the Furness Railway as a cleaner in 1847 and worked his way up to driver. He then moved to the island of Sodor and the Wellsworth and Sudbury line. With the help of his father's inheritance he was able to make his way onto the board of directors. His son Sir Topham Hat II replaced him in 1890. At the time, there were several little railways on the island, and he began to use his influence on these railways. In 1914, the major companies of the Sodor Railways came together. These included the Wellsworth and Sudbury, the Sodor and Mainland, the Farquhar and Tidmouth, and the Mapford Harbour Railway. These formed the North Western Railway, which formed just a month before the beginning of the Great War. Their first locos were a mix from all these different companies that formed the Northwestern Railway, including Lily, Colin, Adam, Lady and Victor. The NWR's first purchase was an engine which had helped on the island with the docks at Brendam when they were being built, Furness Railway K2 Edward, purchased in 1916 as the first express engine. He was soon joined by two Class 27s from the LNYR that had been modified at the NWR's works at Crowdenus Gate to add leading bogies. Unfortunately, one was scrapped after an accident, and the one that remained was James, which became number five. In the 1920s, another two locos joined the roster, number four Gordon, an experimental engine from Sir Nigel Gresley, and number three Henry, who would eventually be rebuilt after an accident with the Flying Kipper. It was around this time that the cheeky tank engine Thomas arrived on the island, and we all know what happens after his arrival. It's at this point the events of season 1 to 6 of Thomas the Tank Engine take place, as well as all the RWS stories up till Tramway Engine, and a select few episodes of season 7 on the screen now.
Yes, I know there are continuity errors in the RWS and the TV series, but bear with me here. The major events that I want to focus on from the RWS are the Scotsman's arrival on the island and the events of Super Rescue, Stepney's story arc from the RWS happens with him visiting the island instead of being rescued by Rusty, the little engines of the Arsdale Railway having their adventures, and of course the Scarlowe Railway. And yes, this does mean that the Caldy Fell engines exist in my series, unfortunately I don't have any models of them at this time. And of course, just to break the fourth wall, Sir Reverend Audrey starts writing the Railway series. Now back to my timeline. In 1948, British Railway is formed. For a short period, the North Western Railway is in the process of being merged with BR. However, the Topham family is able to pull some favours and get the NWR an exemption from joining BR. This was issued by the King. However, BR at the time was to own the track and have a say in any new safety measures that were needed to bring the NWR in line with the rest of the network. Unfortunately, the Wild Norwester service from Natford to London was cut by BR because of this exemption. Going forward, BR trains would then run from Barrow in Finesse to Vickerstown, and twice daily the NWR would travel to Barrow in Finesse, once in the morning and once at night. This service continues to this day. During the beaching cuts, the NWR was able to successfully petition the government to allow the track and signalling to fall under their control, but not before several lines were cut. It was during these years that Patrick, Bear, Caden, Iris and Derek came to the island. Derek needs major work to keep him operational along with the arrival of Porter, Sultan and a few minor characters. In the 1970s, Stanley joined the line and became a shunter at Swellsworth, working hard as the banker for the main line along with the arrival of Arthur, Eric and Alice. In 1975, the cement works would open and they would bring Fergus and Sheffield to the line as well. In the 1980s, Pip and Emma were contracted from BR to run a Natford to London Express service to replace the Wild Northwestern Express that was cut in 1949 due to the NWR not joining British Rail. They would run on the island all the way to Natford. They would join the NWR fleet in 2001 when the Voyager class took over their main duties on the mainland. Come the 1990s and BR slowly on the decline, the NWR filed a petition with the government to have it recognised as a heritage railway. This motion was passed and given a royal decree by the Queen, who has visited the island a lot over the years. With that, the Sodor Heritage Company was formed. This would eventually own the NWR, Sodor Heritage Tugs, which became known as the Star Tugs, the Sodor Bus Company, and the Sodor Road Freight Company. Sodor Chronicles picks up in the late 2000s, starting with Eric and the Milk take place in 2005. We move forward to 2009 to Stepney Returns and the reveal that the old WS engines had survived all this time. In 2010, Tornado arrives on the island and tells of the Great North Race from the year before, with Daisy's Ghost, Lincoln and Hydroplane happening at the same time. Season 2 of Sodor Chronicles begins in 2016 with the return of Flying Scotsman to the island during the events of Heritage. Soda Chronicles' first special, Thomas's Wonderful Life, takes place in 2016, with all following episodes taking place over the years of 2017 onwards. And that's as far as we are for now. I originally didn't want to have the show so far into the 2010s, simply because I didn't think it would work as well. However, certain aspects of the real world had influence on this, such as the 2009 Top Gear race to the north, and the 2016 launch of Flying Scotsman. So where does this take Sodor Chronicles? Well I have a few episodes planned out, one of which has been teased. I also plan to add a few more characters and a museum, so watch out for those episodes. Thank you all for joining me. Good night. Reach for the wind, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the song, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. So much to see, 
So far to travel, so much to learn to know. Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to, who knows how far we'll go. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true. Your own imagination is waiting there. Shining time station where dreams can come true. Your own imagination waiting there.